my journey so far has highlighted just how lucky I am to have, you know, like all the resources around me. You know, my parents are well off. You know, they've supported me. They've put me in the schools. They've given me the support I need. I've always had a roof over my head. I've never had to worry about anything. And that, just as a <laughs> thing, you know, that is massive. I mean, huge. And, you know, people that don't have any of the stuff that I've had that kind of get to where I am or whatever, like, fair play. Like, you know, it's, it's really hard out there. has experience with working with people, so she was accepting of me, she didn't look at me differently, which I was lucky to have. So I knew it was possible for everyone else. Um, I grew up without a father, so he, yeah, he wasn't around. My nan, she helped me a lot. She was always there for me. I have an auntie, an uncle, who my uncle is uh, also on the spectrum and has a severe dyslexia. So he was quite as the same uh, role model to me. And probably my younger cousin, just emotional support, he was always there for me. Um, I had uh, a brother who is autistic. I had a, a father who was autistic. I know that he was autistic now, I didn't know at the time. And uh, back in those days, autism wasn't really a thing. Nobody really knew about it. And so my, my brother was particularly autistic. Um, my father, being autistic, didn't know how to, how, to, how to deal with it, which led to the separation of my parents um, we ended up moving into council houses. We ended up, you know, becoming very poor, living not a great life when, when I was a kid. Um, and so I didn't know it at the time that it was autism. My brother didn't know, my father didn't know, my mother didn't know. Uh, but looking back, it was, it was very obvious that that was the case. Actually, life now, we make the best of it what we can. But in those really early days, um, you have these ideals of what you think might happen and it was nothing like that and that was really lonely because we couldn't go out and have a day out or if we did somebody would get hurt in the process um, usually my youngest unfortunately um, so we have to just safeguard everything um, home life is pretty much everything's under lock and key to ensure that everybody stays safe knives and front door will stay locked um, yeah we, we pretty much we have really good days as well though, where we all sit and watch TV. We have nibble nights where we lay on a spread for a king um, and, and make memories that way. You know, it's taken a while to realise is that I was trying to prevent triggers for Ben. So things that he was, that he found difficult and uh, you know, his sensory issues. So where he would find crowds, difficult, bright lights, noise. I was trying to prevent all of those triggers to him having a mini meltdown or, you know, collapsing on the floor. And because we live down by the sea, we go, we go down to the coast a lot. And I started, you know, analysing tide charts and I started over planning. So I was trying to prevent all these triggers. So every event that we planned, every day trip that we planned, I put all this pressure on myself because I was trying to prevent the triggers for bed. And what would happen nine times out of ten is that I was so tense and anxious before we got out of the door that Ben would pick up that I was tense and anxious and then it wouldn't work out and we'd go home and I thought that was just a complete failure. So it's taken me a while to realise to just don't over plan, don't set high expectations to what you think is going to be a successful day trip or event. You know, if you go somewhere and you're only there for 15 minutes, you have to come away, it was a success because you tried. So to go on holiday for my family means planning. It means sitting down and going on the internet and showing the child where it is we're going, what the rooms look like, how the bathrooms are, because that's really important to my children. They're very funny about germs and things like that. So it's just a lot of research. And then also we try to go to countries where, not necessarily where they're aware of autism or whatsoever, but to countries where we know that we, we feel safe because one of my children's an absconder, he just runs off. So when we go to, a, say for example, a resort, we need to ensure that it's enclosed. We need to make sure that there's security. We need to make sure that there's a plan. So we don't just get up and lay by the pool, no. Like 
our day has to be full of activities. It has to make sure that we know what we're doing from we wake up to we go to sleep. And food wise, a lot of the time we bring a lot of things with us. So even if it's an all inclusive type of holiday, we'd still need to bring what I call beige foods. They're things that are just beige because that's the need. So that's what we do. So yeah, it's just a little bit more difficult. Biggest issue in our family is my neurotypical 14 year old and my other son. Um, what tends to happen in families with two children is that the neurotypical child becomes ultra sensitive, becomes hugely um, empathetic. So, you know, when my eldest son is struggling because he's eaten his Easter egg and he wants another one and he's going to smash things until he gets one, my youngest will take his last Easter egg and go, Dad, give him that. Now, for a, for a young child to give up his chocolate because he wants to make life easier for his dad, you know, the first thing you do is you go straight to the shop and you buy him another five Easter eggs. But to see your youngest child do that and to see your youngest child not just, not just help his older brother, but actually go out of his way and, you know, take things away from his childhood <laughs> to allow us to have a better life is, I mean, it's just a maturity beyond, beyond his age. Um, that's had me in tears on regular occasion because you know, you suddenly realise that you've paid him no attention. Um, and you suddenly realise that he's giving up everything to try and make life easier for you. It was harrowing. It was harrowing. It had an impact on our daughter. So our daughter is suffering from extreme anxiety and actually um, had an eating disorder, was hospitalised. She was quite unwell. Whether the two are linked, I don't know. But I know that she found it very difficult to witness her brother in his bedroom in the dark for weeks, months on end. Um, she saw parents who were fighting with the system, who were struggling with um, their son being out of school and missing out on the opportunities, not just to learn, but the social opportunities that comes with being a young teenage lad who plays rugby and football and is, is great fun to be around. What we saw was a different version of our son and those three years were, yeah, horrific. And at one point we thought we were going to lose him. He, he took an overdose, he had suicidal ideations, and he was hospitalised for a while as well. I was trying to build and develop a future for my son that I could pass down to him. And all of a sudden, none of that mattered anymore. It didn't matter all the material things and all the other things that I was focusing on. Suddenly, just the whole world now was just about Ben and trying to understand what autism meant for him. Um, so yeah, it, cha it changed a lot. It changed everything about how I felt. And I made some significant changes in my personal life. Um, work consumed too much of my life. Um, I also decided to stop drinking because drink was a big part of the social side to my job. So I made some really dramatic changes <laughs> um, and I think, I mean, this is emotional when I think about this, but, but I think it was, it was a massive moment in, in our marriage as well, because I think up until then, I was spending so much time away with work and focused on work and having a good time and all the things that were coming with that success. Um, that none of that mattered anymore. And it actually brought us closer as, as a couple. Family life is good, but because of having a really supportive husband. But actually, I always, I always felt like somehow I'm a massive letdown, kind of because I don't do all those domestic things because actually I'm the career woman, I'm driven by those things. But he knew that when he met me, he knew what he was getting himself into. But recently he actually said to me that he's really proud of me. And that came as a real shock. And I think that's the kind of, the low self-esteem that you have is, I just thought he can't be, he must just be thinking, oh, she's so rubbish because she hasn't done the dishes. Where actually he's thinking, wow, I'm really proud of her. She's, she's running a business and she's helping all these other business people. And, he was proud of me for getting Adam's school place. And he said, you know, he couldn't have done that because his mind doesn't work the same way as me. So I think that's been quite a, 
quite a big thing for me is just that understanding that we might not have the kind of typical family. I'm certainly not the typical housewife. Thank God he's a great house husband as well as being a great full-time working person. Um, but yeah, it kind of works in that each of us brings something to that relationship and he puts up with me, but I do some good stuff along the way. We're, we're an odd family. Um, we, we are an odd family. My, my wife is possibly the most neurotypical person in the family. Um, she holds us all together. We met when she was 15 and I was a year older. Um, so we've been with each other for, since, since school. Um, she knows I'm autistic. She's very good with me. Um, she knows when I need my space. I have my, my little man cave where I go and build things. And she knows when I'm having a moment to leave me alone. You know, she knows when I need space. She knows when I need comfort. She knows when I need attention. Um, and she's very good at it. And I think the way that she's grown up with me has helped her with my son, because my son is effectively the, the same as me. You know, we don't go on holiday as a family because it's too difficult. So we take it in turns to go on holiday. So it's odd. I mean, I, I'll go to Fuerteventura on my own. Um, have a week off, come back to madness, and she'll go off and see her friends in South Africa for a week. She'll come back to madness. But we look after each other. And that's, you know, if you haven't got people around you, which the majority of autistic kids don't have two parents, that must be awful. For our family, having a really consistent approach between my husband and I has not only made it easier for us to cope in difficult times, but has absolutely supported our son through through difficult times. And he appreciates that. I got, got a text the other day from him. It was two o'clock in the morning. Again, that's not unusual. Just to say, I know things haven't been easy in the last couple of weeks and I've been a bit difficult, but I want to say thank you to you and mum for supporting me. You know, that's, that means the world to me.